my, 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 nobody even knew. And I was asking the Lord and all of you that have preached up here before and all of you that have given messages are grateful for confirmation. The Lord gave it in so many ways. Nobody knew, not even my wife, knew what I was going to talk about today. I didn't even know. I was like, Lord, do I need to speak this word? And it's a big yes. Please be ready to hear what thus saith the Lord. I really mean it. Because I remember going to Brother Brian's house one time, and he was working on a rototiller for the pastor. And right then, the Lord gave me a message. The pastor needed that rototiller to till his land, and he's been feeding us and feeding us, and we need to have our land rototilled so we can take that ground. If we want to harvest, we got to die. We got to have a seed. And what my message right now is going to be about becoming nothing. How to become nothing? I'm going to do something out of the ordinary. And if any of you know me, I'm different all the way. Okay? I'm going to assign different people scriptures. I'm not lazy. I want to get you involved. And if you hear it for yourself, you'll grasp it even more. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm not nervous. I'm just shaking because I'm full. Yes, hallelujah. First of all, everybody stand, please. Lord, right now, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this awesome presence that we feel, Lord. We just want to thank you and invite you, Lord, to keep staying with us, Lord. Lord, let your mercy and grace be multiplied upon us, Lord. Lord, open up our ears, Lord, so we can hear, Lord, what it is you have for us today, Lord. Open up our hearts, Lord, to receive, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord, for accomplishing your word in us, Lord. And I just ask you right now, anoint these lips of clay, Lord, so I can give this message the way you gave it to me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those of you that have your Bibles, let me see them. That way I know who to call on. My wife's fired already. All right, the main, the main scripture is going to be um, right now, 2 Corinthians 3, 5. We can all go there right now. Second Corinthians 3 and 5. Everybody there? 2 Corinthians 3, chapter 3, verse 5 says this. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amen? So with that scripture, that being my theme scripture, if we have the attitude, if we have the mindset, if we have the lifestyle of we are nothing, we have nothing, we know nothing, we can do nothing apart from Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul said, you may be seated, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 2, said, for I am determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Um, if I can have, I'll start over here, Brother Steve, if you can get me Romans 12 and 3. Sister Deborah, if you could please give me Isaiah 66 and 2. Brother Jerry, uh, can you give me Lamentations 3.39, please? Corey, you got a Bible? Sir, if you could get me um, Proverbs 16 and 18. I need one more. Austin, thank you, sir. Philippians 4, 11, and 12, and I'll do the rest. Hallelujah. When we become nothing, first of all, we got to realize we are nothing. We, 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 you know, in the Bible it says, when man is born, he's conceived and born in iniquity, right? So we already coming into the world know how to be big. The, and the father of being big, being very prideful, we all know is Lucifer, he got cast down from heaven for that very thing. He wanted to be above God. He wanted to be bigger than God. So therefore, our nature automatically is, I am this, I have that, I have this big truck. No pun intended, Brother Brian. I have this gift. 
I have this blessing. I have this talent. I, 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 me, me, me. Nothing goes to God. Amen. And you know, when you get such a big ego, a big machismo, as we say in Spanish, you can't fit in this room. Amen. How do you expect to get full when you're already full of yourself? Amen. Romans 12 and 3. Who's got that? Brother Steve. Yes. We think I am that, I am this, but God truly says, because of me, you have this. If it, if it had not, it would have not, any of this would have not been possible without God. Amen? None of this. We are nothing. Why? Because first of all, he created us. You know, when the devil's beating on you and telling you you're dirt, you're beaten down, you say, yes, devil, I am dirt. But I got the breath of the living God in me. I'm beaten down, pressed over, shaken up. Hey, blessings are coming my way. And still, like they say, like the little kids say, God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. But I tell you what, like my little grandson tells me, I said, Gabriel, what are you? I'm a soldier boy. We need to be soldier boys, soldier women of the most high God. Amen. I'm tired of getting beat up. I'm tired of getting shot down. I'm tired of thinking I'm nothing of myself, but because of God, you know. We got, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me slow down. Isaiah 66 and 2, who has that? Amen. And if you want to know the secret, there it is in a nutshell. You know, we all know, all of us know, the Lord will never turn down a broken and a contrite heart. Amen. That, that's what it means. If, if you want to start with something, you got to have nothing. Little is much with God, right? He, to feed 5,000, he needed what? Two fish, three loaves, and he still had some left over. Amen. The devil, like I said, has already taught us how to be big, how to be prideful, how to get. The thing is, we got to be small in humility. The, the person that comes to mind was Paul when he was Saul of Tarsus. He was real big, killing all the Christians, persecuting them. Amen. But then, like the pastor was saying, on the road to Damascus, he had that encounter. And if you really pay attention, he had to hit the dirt. Come on, people. You got to get off that high horse, hit that dirt. Amen? Then the Lord told him, he, he took away his sight. He took away his sight. He gave him a new vision, a new perspective. Amen? That's what we need, a new vision, a new perspective. Amen? Getting small in humility is very hard to do. A lot of us don't like it. A lot of us, I know I don't like it. But see, God pushes us into humiliating circumstances of life. And then we think, okay, Lord, I'm doing better. I'm, I'm, I, I, I finally get it. You know, it, it's, I'm, it's coming through. But it's not enough. Because the Apostle Paul, who's got a Philippians 4? 11 through 12. Can you do that, please? In all things. He had to learn that. Then that somebody just didn't hand it down, say, so here you go, Paul. He knows I know how to be full. I know how to be hungry. I know how to be a base. I know how to abound. Why? Because he had to go through a lot. Paul went through, I don't know, countless uh, shipwrecks. How many times did they stone him, put him in jail? He still kept going on. All I get is a paper cut. I want to quit. Amen? You can either say amen or owe me.
When God pushes us into humiliating circumstances, we think, okay, God, that's enough. But then that's when you know who you really are. My wife always tells me, you'll know who you are when you're under pressure. Amen? That's when you know who you are. That's when you know what your real fruit is. That's, that's when you know when you're being mashed, if you're given a sweet savor or the other. Amen? And most of us, anybody that's ever planted a garden, you know that, what, like I mentioned, you've got to till that ground up. You've got to break that soil up. You've got to get all them roots out of there. You've got to get all that mess out of there first. Then you got to plow it again. you got to make them rows. you got to make them straight. Don't let them be crooked. You have stuff growing everywhere. Amen? Then once you get it, you got to put that seed in there. After you put the seed in there, you got to cover it back up. Then what? Then you got to water it. Then you got to look after it. But let's, let's see the seed now. Let, let's go underground. That seed has to break. It has to die. This church is going to get a harvest. The Lord has given me several dreams. He's given many messages, many prophecies. We have to die to ourselves. He's proud of what we're doing. And we want to harvest, Brother Jerry. Guess what? We got to bust out, break down, and then go. We already been sowing. Are you expecting a harvest? What are we sowing? We're selling, we're sowing humility, right? We're putting, we're paying, we're laying aside every measure and weight that besets us. Amen. The greatest example of this, I'm going I'm to go to two examples. Number one, Father Abraham. Abraham. Let's all go to Genesis um, 12 and 1, please. I can relate to Abraham in this aspect. If we all know the story. When he was in his father's house, and the Lord told, said unto Abram in Genesis 12, 1, he said, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Amen. Pastor said several times and other preachers, you got to get out of your comfort zone. If you want something, you got to work for it, you got to look for it, you got to go for it. You're not going to get it stuck. In the rut, you're not going to get it stuck in your recliner. You're not going to get it stuck over here where where I'm okay, God. I'm right here. I want to work miracles, but I want to do it from here. Amen. I want. I don't. I don't, I don't want nothing else. I don't. I, I love you. I want to serve you, but I want to do it my way. Amen. Abraham, perfect example. He could have said no. Amen. He said, Lord, what, 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 I can imagine he stuttered too like Moses. Where, where, where am I going? How, how will I know when I get there? If, if we go to Genesis 15, 1 and 7, just a couple pages. It says that after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it unto him for righteousness. Amen. So, like it said in verse 1, the Lord gave Abram a vision. All right? He didn't know where he was going. He just knew he had to leave. He goes, how will I know when I get there? You'll know when you get there because you'll know it. You, you know that, that gut feeling? You, you just know when you know something is right. You just know that something is, I mean, it's just right there. You just know. And the reason he knew he was in the right place because Melchizedek came and brought offerings and gave him wine and blessed him right then and there. That's where he knew. When we know when we're at the right place, we're going to know, church. We're going to know we're on the verge 
of so many things. We're on the verge of harvest. We're on the verge of revival. We're on the verge of going home. We're on the verge of so many things. Where is our vision? The message said my people perish because lack of knowledge. Where's your vision? We want to count God faithful, but can he count on you? Can he count on us? What are we counting on? Working from here? Lord, bless me, but from here, it's like, you're it, but I can't reach you. Abraham had to get out of there because, as we know, the good Lord said it himself. He said, a prophet is not welcomed in his own country. He had to get out of there. He said, Lord, whatever you have for me, if I can't find it in my family's house, I have to go somewhere else. If I can't find it in Michigan, I have to go to Alabama. Amen? If I can't find it over there, I have to come over here to Laverne First Assembly. Lord, I can't find it where I used to be. I had to come to the cross. I had to come to the feet of Jesus. Amen? That's where I find it. That's my exceeding great reward. Amen? I'm not through yet. Abraham keeps going. And then he realizes, okay, Lord, I'm old. You're going to give me a blessing. Uh, You know, I'm up for that, sure. That's good. But, I mean, I'm old. My wife's old. What are we going to do? The Lord comes through for him again. But, first of all, Sarah was like me, trying to fix everything. He said, you know, here, take, take, take my handmaiden. And he had Hagar, um, she took Hagar and had Ishmael, right? So now, when we get there, we will know it. But then, everything costs something. When the Lord told Abraham, okay, I got a test for you. Go to Mount Moriah. I want to test your faith now. I want you to give your son. Okay, so now we know. Let me fast forward. Um, the, the, three, the angel visited um, Sarah and Abram and said, you're going to conceive a son. And they laughed, and they had Isaac. Okay? So Abraham's got two sons now, right? Ishmael and Isaac. So then the Lord goes to Abram in Genesis 17 and 18. At this time, the Lord told Abram to go up to Mount Moriah and sacrifice his son. So right away, Abram thought, okay, you know, it, it, it's, it's got to be Ishmael. You know, he was the firstborn. But right here in 17 and 18, it says, And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Abraham was thinking the promise was going to be in Ishmael. The promise wasn't going to be in Ishmael. The promise is to be in Isaac. And you know, when, when, when the Lord tells us to sacrifice something that we don't want to give up, that's, that's, that's where the proof of the pudding's at. Amen? In Isaac, he had all the promises, all the covenants, all his future, all his hope. In Ishmael, he didn't have nothing. Amen? He didn't have nothing, but in Isaac... He had everything to to prove, but the Lord told him in Genesis 22 and 2. Let's go there, please. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I shall tell thee of. So, and if you really read that scripture very well, he said, son, twice for clarification. Okay? He didn't want Abraham to try to pull an okie doke He didn't want him to, to say, okay, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you Ishmael. That was his way of thinking. That would have been my way of thinking. He said, no, take thy son, thine only son. We read back there, he said, the seed that will come out of your own bowels. It's got to cost you something. Yeah, Ishmael came out of your bowels, but he's not truly yours. 
Amen. He's not what I had planned for. He's not, he's not part of the vision. He's not part of the equation. Amen. And when God proves you, he really puts you to the grindstone. You know, he says, I want your whole life. God is a jealous God. God don't want nothing else in front of him. He don't want no gifts. You know, who am I to tell the Lord with everything he's given me, well, Lord, I'm going to give this to you. All my talents, all my guitars that I can play, all this that I can do, all these fancy words that I can say, they weren't mine to begin with. He gave them to me. They're his. None of this is mine. So do you see where I'm saying? I'm becoming nothing. I am nothing apart from Jesus Christ. Amen. I have nothing. You know, it says in the Bible, what good is a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen. God is a jealous God. Don't take gifts, fall in love with them or anything else but his own person. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And in the test, we all know, we all know what we're supposed to do. We all know, we, we all know. Amen. God, when he made us, he instilled discernment in us. He instilled morals and values. We know what it is to do right. We know what it is to do wrong. When God asks you to do something, it's not because he's mean. It's because he wants to prove what you've been doing. We've been praying. We've been fasting. We've been reading the word. In technicality, in technicality we've been spiritually weightlifting. Okay? So then by seeking and praying, we have to get a picture of what it is God is after. If it's our ministry, our relationship, either way, we've got to surrender, give it all up. He gave it all up. He gave his only begotten son, right? If he sent the lamb to the cross to die for us, and how, how many was here this morning when the pastor said, who wants to know what the Lord did in those three days? He went to hell and took the keys from death and the devil, right? Now, I'm not cussing. I don't, I don't want none of you to get this wrong. But did the lamb go to hell for me? Yes. If I'm not willing to go through a literal hell, how can I put up with the hell in this world that we go through? Without having a vision of the lamb, without having a vision of, Lord, because of you, I exist. Lord, had it not been for you, I would not be here. Lord, had it not been for you, none of you would be here. I should be dead by now. So my sister can verify, I should be 50 times dead by now. But because of mercy and grace. But not just that. God sees my potential. Amen. He sees your potential. He sees God's word will never come back void. If Jesus said it, I believe it. But when he tells me this, I'm going to do, and I'm going to not only do it, I'm going to show you and prove you, but you just got to do this one little thing. That's like somebody to say, well, you know, I'm going to give you a brand new Mercedes Benz. You're going to get it free. But the key is going to you, cost you $10,000. Amen. But it, it's not this way. I'm going to give you eternal life, streets of gold, a new city whose, whose foundation and maker is of God. Amen. It's going to be yours free. But... Take up that cross and follow me. Die to self. Become nothing so that I can make you something. To impurify you. To, to take away those impurities. To purify you. Amen. So one of our biggest complaints is I'm so little. The problem's too big. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. Lord, I, I, man, I can't do that. It's too hot. I can't do that. It's too far. I, I can't do that, my back. Lord, really, is this you? Devil, get out of there. That ain't God. No, it's not. No, it's not. But you see, like I said with that seed, when he sees that we die to ourselves, when he sees that we're broken and contrite and willing to grow, then 
How many has ever seen a dried up seed? I mean, uh, I know pecans are very popular here. You know, when that husk falls down and that nut's out of there, all that's left is that little husk. Any kind of wind can blow that away. Correct? That's what we have to become, that little husk. Because by then, when we're in a trouble, in a trial, in a, in a, in a, in a tribulation, and we're like that little husk, when we become that nothing, and we say, Lord, I praise you. Even though they're about to take my house away, I praise you. Even though they're supposed to take my car away, Lord, I lift up your name. Lord, I praise your blood. Lord, I praise the cross. Lord, I give it all to you. It was never mine to begin with. Then the Lord will come like a mighty whirlwind and lift you up and pick up that husk. And that's when Philippians 4.13 comes to life where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because we're nothing. He can't pick up some big-headed, prideful person. Amen? Brother Randy Barker, if you can have Revelations 3, 7 through 10, please. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. That's shouting grounds right there. Because if, if anybody knows their history, if anybody knows about the Bible, and um, I mentioned this in the men's meeting a while back, and the Lord, not, don't take it because I said it. The Lord's already said it. I'm just here giving the message that he gave for me to give to you. And this is it. The Church of Philadelphia. He says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast little strength. How would they have that little strength if they weren't in a battle? How would they have that little strength if they weren't working, sowing? How would they have that little strength if they ain't giving it their all? Amen? You're not weak if you haven't done nothing. If you've been sitting on that pew, you're not going to be tired. When you're using your feet, when you're running on, you're going to be tired. Amen? We need to be tired. Not tired of reading, not tired of fasting, not tired of helping. But we need to be tired that we can say, Lord, I need more of you. Help me. Lift me up right now, Lord. I'm tired, but Lord, you, you can help me. Lord, you will carry me. I know you'll carry me. Why? Because you did it yesterday. Because you'll do it tomorrow. And not just me, you, 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 everybody. And he says, because, in verse 10, he says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to them that dwell upon the earth. That's a mouthful right there. I'm not a theologian, but here's what this scripture means to Nicolaeva. When the Lord gives you a word that you don't understand, whether it's when I'm reading the Bible or whether a prophet comes and prays over you and the Lord happens to give a prophetic message. And I don't understand it. Or Brother Jerry, I haven't seen it come in the past yet, but it's coming. How do we know? Because we know. Like Abraham, I'll know when I get there. I'm making steps to get there. I'm on the right track. Why? Because I'm getting all this hell. I'm getting all this tribulation. I'm getting all this fighting. I'm getting tired. My strength is getting low. Amen? That's when, Father, here I am. Father, I need you. Lord, 
I need you. Lord, only you. Lord, you're Savior to me. Lord, you're the head. Do not deny his name nor the power of it. We were just reading. We were just singing his name. Amen? The Lord said all this. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just here going along with what he said. His name. He says, if my people who are called by my name shall fall on their face, not sit on it, fall on it, and not deny my name, what will he say? He said, I will heal their land. You're not going to get a harvest in McDonald's. You're going to get it in the field. You're not going to expect a crop if you haven't toiled in the soil. Amen? Do not deny his name nor the power of it, but keep his word. Meditate on it. David said, Lord, thy word have I kept in my heart that I might meditate on it day and night. I have, I have raised them upon my chest as statues. You know what a statue is? It's a law given by example. And so then, when there's a word, you know, when God gives you a package you do not understand, hold on to it. Keep praying so that the Lord, in his time, when you're actually ready, when he sees that you put in the effort, when he sees that you put in the time, then he'll reveal it to you. And getting back to Abraham, when he was ready to give up Isaac, he had the knife right here, right? That'd be hard for many of us as parents, I know that. But do you realize, not only did this man have faith, because on his way up the mountain, he told the other men that was with him, he said, me and the boy will come back. That's faith number one. Up there on the mountain already, Isaac said, Look, Father, where's the sacrifice? The Lord will provide. That's two. The third and final one, had he actually gone through with it, Sister Marcy, he had faith enough to know that the Lord could raise his son up. The Lord gave it to him. The Lord gave us. The Lord take us away. Why wouldn't he raise him up if he gave it to you? He was, if, if you really read the Bible, they call Abraham dead already in his old age. He said, how could a dead man have life? The Lord said it earlier. Is there anything too hard for me? With men, all things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen? Not because I said it. I couldn't even make that up if I wanted to. And Abraham trusted God to raise him up. And the thing about Abraham is to have the faith of Abraham, but not, not, just, not just in that, but also... When you're going through the, to, through the trials, through the temptations, when we say, Lord, I have faith in you. Lord, I'm going to trust you. Why? Because I have to. I am nothing. I know nothing. I can do nothing apart from you. Because had it not been for you, Lord, I would be a terrible, terrible mess. That's where he found me at to begin with. I was a hot mess. And when we surrender, we got to realize, and if you think about it, from Genesis all the, way, all the way to Revelation, the Lord has proven in many, many occasions and circumstances that if we just trust in him, if you just give it to him, if you just rely on him, he's going to bring it to pass. And if he doesn't, what have we got to lose? We ain't losing out nothing anyway. Amen? If all you gain is eternal life, that's enough right there. Amen? If, if all I gain is not going to the hell that I've been through and going to a more worse hell, if there's even a word like that, I've already gained. I've already won. Amen? And if most of you know right now, in Philadelphia, they call it the, the city of brotherly love. Amen. 
And the Lord told him, I know thy works. He's seen you working. He's seen you toiling. He's seen you fasting. He's seen you praying. He's seen you shed them tears. He's seen you water that garden. He's seen you lift up his name. He's seen you keeping his word. He's seen you keeping his promises. Amen? Steadfast. Hold fast so that nobody will take your crown. That's what it says in verse 11 of Revelation. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. How many remember that sermon, Pastor Preach? What have you, have you, have, what have you got in your hand? Amen. Tonight is, is your faith intact. Amen. What are you going to do with it? What have you been doing with it? Where is it at? That talent that I give you, we all know the parable of the talents. Do we have it hidden in the ground? That's the wrong kind of planning. Amen. The Lord has been dealing with me about a lot of things. And one thing is, quit trying to fix it yourself. Let me fix it because all I'm going to do is make it worse. And I have. And I've regretted it, and it's cost me almost four to five times more. It really has. I'm telling you from experience. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. If God can save an alcoholic, cocaine addict, guitar playing, wannabe big little Mexican, he can save anybody. I'm serious. Because if he can do it for me, I know he will do it for you. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You know why? I wasn't ashamed of being all in my filth, all in my puke, and saying I had a good time. Happy New Year to me. Busted, disgusted, without hope. Dude, do you know what you did last night? I had fun. I had fun, man. Was it good? No. No. Not because of who I am, but because of who he is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And forget not all his benefits. Hallelujah. When God gave you salvation, Brother Corey, he gave you so much more. He gave you promises. Not only promises, he gives us hope. And he turns that hope into faith. And that faith into blessings. And that blessings were right back to promises and right back again. All over again. With God, there's no beginning and there's no end. Just like Pastor was talking about that lady with the vessels pouring that oil. It only stops when we say stop. It only stops when we stop. If my giving stops, his giving stops. But because of his mercy and love, it don't matter what I do, it don't matter what I am, he still loves me. But do we love him back? Amen. Keep his word. Keep his promises. And we do not have to ride on our little strength. If there's anything you get from this message is if you want to become something, you got to start out as nothing. Amen. Because it is only then that you'll be able to do all things through Christ. Why? Because he, strength, he strengthens you. It's not going to be because, well, I, you know, this church got paid off because I did it. No. No way. I'm walking here because I knew how to get through life. I knew how to cheat, steal, and borrow. No. People, people that are, are living that type of lifestyle right now, they're going to get their just reward. They're just thinking they're getting by. They're just thinking they're getting one over on God. He sees all things. Amen? And, and if you think about it in a spiritual sense, when that big whirlwind comes and lifts you up, that's going to be the rapture. Amen? If you're not lifted up in that whirlwind, you're going to be here, and all that wickedness that he promised will come to pass. I do not want to be here when that happens, brother. I really don't. I already had 
all my wickedness I already had, all my hell, I don't want to see no more. Amen? All I want to see is love, life, and light. That's all I want to see. And that's when that, that's my favorite scripture in, in 1 Corinthians 2 and 2. For I'm determined not to know anything among you. I don't want to know about Facebook. I don't want to know about the Christmas party. I don't want to know about Alabama. I don't want to know about Auburn. I want to know about Jesus Christ and him crucified because he's the one that's going to get me there. Not Nick Saban. Faith of Abraham. It was counted to him as righteousness. What's it counted as to you? A rut roll. Faith. We got to have the faith of a little child. And that cracks me up. All of you know my little grandson, Gabriel. I know all of you love him. And I'll say, Gabriel, what are you? I'm a soldier boy. We need to have that attitude. I'm a soldier boy. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier in the army of the most high God. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because I'm washed in the blood. Why? Because he saved me. I'm saved, sanctified, and on my way to heaven. That's why the devil comes at us so hard. Oh, you're not nothing. That's right, devil. I'm not nothing, but my Lord is. I have his life in me. I have his breath in me. What do you got? I have a future. I already know yours, but look at mine. I want to say I really appreciate and love every single one of you here from the bottom of my heart. Even when I first got here, you made me feel welcome. I feel like I'm at home. I really do. And I really, I really want to say if there's anything I can do for any one of you at any time, you just let me know. I really mean that. I really mean that. Because it says... How do you say you love God whom you do not see if you cannot love your brother whom you do see and you have him right there? Just like that discussion we was having this morning in Sunday school. Having a telephone call or sending a text or a Facebook is not personal as it is as going to your house or going right to where you're at and looking you right in the eye and saying, Brother Steve, I love you. I'm here to help you, brother. Amen. I love you. God bless you.